when I'm coaching candidates through the process of interviewing uh, at Google, I talk about the fact that there are two types of interview questions that you're likely to encounter, and this is the same. Uh, that's true in places outside of Google as well, but um, these two kinds of questions are behavioral questions and technical questions. So behavioral questions are designed to um, really find out like how you, um, how you handle yourself in specific situations, right? Like how do you deal with those things? And hopefully um, as an interviewer, I will get insight into some of the things that you've done in your previous career and get you to elaborate on those details so that I have a sense for how you might perform in similar situations on the job. So there are behavioral questions, but then there are also technical questions. And technical questions focus on specific problems, right? And so I want to get an idea of how you deal with a specific problem, something of which I'm well versed in, uh, but that gives me a chance to see how you work through technical details and how you apply good problem solving strategy. And so behavioral uh, questions and technical questions require a little bit of a different approach. And I want to talk about the differences between those approaches. All right. So first, behavioral questions. These are questions that might sound like uh, like describe how you dealt with the difficult situation on your job. Um, or another one might be how have you dealt with a tough coworker in the past? Um, a behavioral question could also be, you know, talk about something that excites you in your line of work. So any of those things could be used as, um, as uh, behavioral questions. Now, one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna avoid talking speculatively. Um, and what I mean by that is a lot of people will begin by saying, well, you know, if I were in that kind of situation, this is what I would do, okay? Um, you wanna avoid that. Instead, what you wanna do is focus on a situation from your past, um, something that you've actually experienced and talk about how that connects to the question that's being presented. Um, there's something called the STAR technique that I want to teach you very quickly. Uh, it's an acronym that stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Result. So you start out by answering the question uh, by mentioning a specific situation that you needed to accomplish. A situation, or sorry, a situation that you've encountered or a task that you needed to accomplish, right? And it's probably better if you break that up. So talk about the situation and then talk about the task that you needed to accomplish as a result of that situation. Um, next, you're going to talk about the action, right? So what are the specific things that you did individually, right? You, not your, not your whole team. We're, in the interview, I want to know about you. What did you specifically do? I mean, how did that fit into the context of other things that may have been going on? But what did you do in order to um, achieve the, the goal or the target or the task that you needed to accomplish? And then lastly, the result. And so when you were talking about the result, what I want to hear as an interviewer is what are some very specific, measurable, uh, data-driven metrics that you can provide um, that provide evidence um, that you actually accomplished your goal or your target. Uh, companies like Google and others are very data-driven, right? And so data is very, very important. How did you measure your progress? How did you measure that you'd hit your goal um, or that you made significant progress towards it? So STAR is a really, really important uh, technique and it's a very useful one. And for a lot of behavioral questions, you'll probably know what they are uh, because they're questions that come up a lot uh, from interview to interview. You should probably take some time to write out um, in using that STAR methodology, that STAR framework, the answers to those questions before you get into the interview room. That way you have some time to rehearse and be sure of what you're going to say uh, depending upon the question. Um, and so that applies for questions like, um, you know, name the worst thing about yourself. Right? You can use STAR um, to come up with a very um, solid, cogent um, answer to that question and that's well thought out. Right? So uh, these are freebies. Right? These are questions that you know you're going to get. Why not use the framework to your advantage? Um, and the best part about it is that you're tying your actual experience, things that are probably on your resume, you're tying that experience to what you're talking about and that helps to show me as your interviewer um, that you can actually solve these kinds of problems uh, if you encounter them um, at, at the company. So that's behavioral questions. Now the second part of this is um, technical questions, right? How do we deal with technical questions? Technical questions are a little bit different. So in, in a technical question, I'm going to ask you to solve a very specific kind of a problem. Um, so for instance, a question might be um, design an algorithm that sorts an array of numbers. If this were a software engineering interview, that'd be a very softball question I could ask. Um, but in another realm, it could be plan a wedding for a thousand people with only two weeks notice, right? Um, or another question could be build a better toilet. And so they can have um, 
um, they can be very specific or they can sort of be broad, but the idea is that you're going to use some technical skill um, that, uh, that you have or that you're interviewing on to solve that problem. So for that, there's a slightly different framework that I recommend, and I've actually written an article on that called um, um, that talks about my six steps for dealing with um, particularly technical interviewing uh, questions and the kind that you would get at Google. They're available on my website at anthonydmays.com. You can get to it via the short link, amays, dot me slash interview dash tips. So again, that's amays, amays, dot me slash interview tips. Uh, but there's an article there that talks about the six steps and they sort of play out like this. So when you ask a technical question, what you want to do is first thing um, is just repeat the question out loud. This gives your interviewer a chance to understand um, what it is, uh, what your understanding of the problem is. Right. And so if I'm your interviewer, I want to know that you understand the question correctly. If you don't understand the question, you're not going to get very far um, in the interview. So just repeat the question back out loud, preferably in your own words. This also buys you some time to think uh, as you prepare for the next step of the process. So um, it's one of those handy tricks. Use it to your advantage. Second thing that you want to do is ask clarifying questions. So a lot of times in a technical um, interview, there's going to be some ambiguity built into the problem statement. And that's because I'm expecting you to ask questions to really hone in on uh, the specific problem that you need to solve with the specific uh, constraints or the problem domain. So make sure that you ask good questions. That way you have enough information uh, to move on in the process. Um, third thing you want to do is use examples, right? And so um, try to come up with very specific and concrete examples of what success looks like um, or what the problem looks like. Um, so if you're doing coding, this is pretty simple. You just come up with simple inputs and then the expected outputs after you run the code. If there's a wedding planning, it would be, you know, I want to make sure that a certain percentage of people show up and that um, we're this much within budget, whatever that may be, try to use some specific examples um, that you can use to um, illustrate to your interviewer how you're understanding the problem that you need to solve. Um, so once you've repeated the question out loud, you've asked clarifying questions, you've used some examples, now it's time for you to brainstorm. So start thinking through um, some things that you can, some ways that you can solve the problem. Don't just come up with one solution, come up with two or three, right? Really leverage your experience and your innovativeness to come up with multiple solutions. If you only come up with one solution, that's fine, um, but really stop and try to think about two or three other ways that you can solve that and lay those options out before you try to chase one solution or another. Um, let me know as your interviewer, okay, well, here are three ways that I can solve this. Which way would you prefer that I go? Or if you don't mind, I'm gonna take option three and then maybe we can come back to options one and two later. So that's one way that you can uh, uh, talk about um, your brainstorming and, and breaking out some ideas. Next thing that you wanna do is implement. Like, what does it look like for you to implement your solution? If this were a technical interview, you would actually write code on a whiteboard um, that demonstrates how your algorithm works and you'd write that in real code. Um, again, if I use the wedding planning example, maybe it's um, a, a wedding plan strategy uh, that describes the different elements that you would incorporate and when you, uh, maybe it's a timeline that shows like this is, these are the dates that I would do and this is when I would send what, um, whatever. So those are the things that you can do. Um, but the, the idea is that you want to get very concrete with your solution and spell that out for your interviewer so that they understand that you really have um, a plan uh, to accomplish whatever you need to accomplish. Um, now, once you've implemented that or once you've laid that out, the last thing you should do, and this is my step six, test. Test the solution. Make sure that um, what you're thinking in your head actually works out on paper. So just go back through and check and make sure that you're doing the right things you need to do. Again, if this is a coding interview, you'd be able to go line by line through the code and make sure that everything's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, but if it's, um, let's say, designing a better toilet, uh, maybe you want to talk about specifically like what are the... Um, this is how the pieces would work and uh, maybe describe some of the um, engineering behind it. I don't know anything about designing toilets. I'm just using it as an example. But just think through that and um, verify what you've put down. And so those six things, repeating the question out loud, asking clarifying questions, using examples, brainstorming, coming up with one or two uh, or three solutions, implementing one of those solutions or all of them, uh, and then testing. Those are the six steps that I think will really help you to answer those technical questions. Um, and it's really all about showing that you have a coherent problem-solving strategy and technique.